Dr. Robert E. Beasley, uh, Director of Vascular Interventional Radiology uh, and the Vein Center uh, at Mount Sinai Medical Center, as well as Director of Wound Care Center at Mount si Sinai Medical Center on Miami Beach. Uh, today, we're going to talk about what's on the horizon for drug eluding devices. These are my disclosures. So, as far as drug eluding devices go for the periphery, really there's only one drug we're going to talk about, and that's paclitaxel. The mechanism of action um, uh, is re re relegated to working in the uh, area of the cell cycle. And paclitaxel arrests cell division in the G2M phase of the cell cycle, thereby inhibiting cell migration, secretion, and as far as what we work in the day to day world, restenosis of the um, its stents and, and, and uh, areas that have previously been balloon angioplasty. But the properties and me mechanics of paclitaxel, it's hydrophobic. It does not dissolve in water or blood. It's lipophilic. It's attracted to the lipids. And it's anti-proliferative, meaning that it uh, prevents uh, significant instant restenosis related to rapid cell division of the targeted segment. There are five FDA-approved uh, drug-coated or eluding devices. One is the Lutonix Moxi drug-coated balloon, the Admiral drug-coated balloon, Medtronic, Stellarex drug-coated balloon, Spectronetics, the Zilver PTX drug eluding stent from Cook, and the Alluvia drug eluding stent from Boston Scientific. We'll go through all of these uh, today. The first is Lutonix. Lutonix has a low paclitaxel drug-coated uh, uh, balloon with two micrograms per millimeter squared. The thickness is very small at 1.3 microns. The Levant II study design was the one that uh, the, was used for FDA approval of this balloon. It was a pivotal IDE randomized trial with moderate lesions, about 500 patients. There was a predilatation, suboptimal predilatation. You went ahead and treated per standard practice with a successful predilatation. You then randomized from two to one test to control. The primary patency 12-month outcomes were 73% uh, primary patency with Lutonix GCB versus a 56.8% with standard PTA. At two years, it maintained an in, in, in increased uh, primary patency of 58% versus 53% uh, over a standard PTA. The Impact Admiral DCB uh, drug-coated balloon is a higher a concentration of paclitaxel with 3.5 percent micrograms per millimeter. The excipient is urea uh, and it can stay into the system up to 120, 180 days uh, post placement of the balloon. Same type of study design, it was a pivotal uh, IDE randomized trial, 330 patients with moderate lesions following successful predilatation, randomized two to one into either an impact versus a PTA uh, arm. Uh, the provisional stenting was allowed, uh, and if the, the patient had screen failure, then the, the, it was treated as per standard practice. 12-month primary patency was 89.8% versus 66.8%. Lutonix, uh, excuse me, the uh, impact trial has actually uh, maintained uh, a primary patency up to 24 months with a, a primary patency of 70% versus 41, 45%, and indeed at three years, uh, the primary patency uh, is 69 or close to 70 percent versus 41 per, sorry versus 45 percent the uh, efficacy of the trial uh clinically driven tlr significantly decreased in the impact arm versus pta these are some of the cases uh pre and post impact uh, balloon placement as you can see post a uh, very nice result there and there are some areas of very small uh, intimal tear, which you can see at six months, uh, it's on, gone ahead and pretty much healed up. Same thing here, a pre and post, uh, and then at six months, very nice appearance. Um, here, a complete occlusion of the pre dilatation, and then post, uh, wide patency, and at six months, you can see there's even some positive remodeling there with some increased uh, dilatation as well. Here, you can see uh, pre dilatation, and then post dilatation, there's a type B slash C dissection there, uh, but you know, no no rate limiting or anything like that. And then at six months, went up, went on to heal very nicely. Here again, same type of uh, appearance here. Um, pre placement, uh, significant stenosis, post impact at six months, 
a very nice, a very nice result. The Zippo PTX uh, drug eluding stent technology uh, has paclitaxel sprayed onto the stent. Essentially, it is polymer free. Uh, significant uh, uh, numbers of different links which we can use throughout the system. Right now, they even have a 140 length, uh, and they have um, uh, results out to five years, as we shall see in just just a minute. It has a very robust clinical data portfolio with the randomized control trial having about 500 patients. The, the pre-market trial, uh, the global registry of about 800 patients, the Zilver PTX post-market trial in Japan of 900 patients, and then the Zilver Pass, which is an ongoing trial comparing Zilver PTX to bypass grafts in Europe. So a, a robust um, a plethora, plethora of clinical data. The uh, Zilver PTX five-year uh, primary patency with a PSVR of 2.0. Uh, at five years, Zilver PTX demonstrated a 41% reduction in restenosis compared to bare metal stenting with a 72.4% versus a 53%. As far as CDTLR, uh, Zilver PTX demonstrates a 48% reduction in reintervention when compared to standard care with 83% versus 67%. At five years, only 1.9% fracture rate at five years as well. As far as the images and case review goes, you can see here a bare metal stent. A zilver was placed proximally at the area of the ostium of the superficial femoral artery, and the zilver PTX was taken was placed distally. And at one year following implant, you can see the difference in restenosis of the two stents. Here's another example of, of, of uh, at six months intervals, a zero PTX was placed uh, at the ostium and a bare metal stent was placed distally with a severe instant restenosis. And here's another same patient. The zero PTX was placed on the left leg and a regular bare metal stent, uh, self-expanding night nail was placed on the right leg, complete occlusion at one year. And then on the left side, you can see wide patency. Uh, and this is to compare what we normally see here with a bare metal stent, you can see severe instant restenosis, which is pretty much diffuse and scattered throughout the entire length of the stent. With a Zilver PTX, you can see pretty much just little focal areas of uh, restenosis. Talking about another um, uh, DCB entrance uh, into the um, uh, our armamentarium, there's Stellarex DCB uh, technology. Um, is also a low pac paclitaxel drug coated balloon. The excipient is uh, polyethylene glycol, and it has a high uh, drug transfer efficiency. The pilot study for the Luminate trial showed that uh, in 50 first in humans, uh, there was almost a 90% primary patency at a year and 80% at two years. The pivotal clin clinical study was randomized against standard PTA, 300 patients at 42 sites, only dealing with the SFA and lesion links three to 14 centimeters. Um, and then enrollment was completed in 2015. Uh, as far as the baseline core lab angiographic results, this, uh, this trial uh, allowed severe calcification. It also allowed diabetics and it also allowed um, uh, one to zero vessels as far as runoff goes. Uh, and uh, you can see here that the a bailout stenting was extremely low in the trial. The CD TLR freedom at 12 months was 93% versus 87% with the uh, control PTA arm. Primary patency at 12 months was um, 82% uh, versus 70%. Primary patency at two years is 72% versus 54%. And at three years, the new data just released showed that primary patency was 64% versus 51% for um, the uh, the uh, Illuminate trial and the Stellar X stent. So the Stellar X was a low dose DCB. It is. It, it, the, the trial uh, groups were complex with severe calcium, diabetics, and zero to one runoff was 32% of the patients. The 12 month again primary patency was 82% with CDTLR at 93%. And we saw that the uh, primary patency is uh, pretty much, um, you can see that uh, over year two and year three to be maintained. The Alluvia drug eluding stent platform by Boston Scientific is the most recent uh, FDA approved uh, drug eluding device. 
It got its CE mark in 2016. It does have a polymer matrix. Uh, it is placed on the Inovia Stent platform, and it does, again, have paclitaxel. The Majestic study was a study in Europe, and it uh, was uh, at a 12-month interval, um, and this was the first in-man study. It was 57 patients that were looked at. It was a um, prospective multicenter single arm open label trial. Primary endpoint was at nine months with a patency of about 95%. The primary patency at um, uh, maintains itself uh, at six months with a Kaplan Meyer of 96%. And then the 12, 24 month primary patency uh, was close to 80% for the uh, Alluvia uh, stent. The Imperial trial, it was a randomized uh, prospective multicenter trial here in the United States, and it randomized two to one against the Zobra PTX, PTX about, about uh, 500 patients at 75 investigational sites worldwide, and they're going to uh, follow through five years. Again, the, the um, uh, comparator was uh, Zobra PTX. It's the same drug, Paclitaxel. However, the differences in the Zobra PTX uh, and the uh, the uh, imperial trial was that the alluvia stent does have polymer. The Zilver PTX does not have polymer. The alluvia is a low dose paclitaxel, and the uh, Zilver is a higher dose. Uh, the alluvia has longer elution, and the Zilver PTX has shorter elution times. Those are the differences. As far as the Kaplan Meyer uh, uh, patency at 12 months, alluvia had an 88.5 percent primary patency. The Zilver PTX had a 90. 79.5% primary patency, which was just slightly uh, uh, significant as far as clinical significant goes. At two years, Alluvia was slightly better than Zero PTX. However, the, there was no statistical significance uh, at the two-year mark. There was an increase in CDTLR uh, when compared to uh, Alluvia versus Zero PTX at almost a 50% improvement. The Safety, uh, the safety was that uh, uh, in the uh, imperial trial, uh, Alluvia was not inferior uh, as far as major, major adverse events when compared to Alluvia. As far as um, in conclusion, there are multiple peripheral coded eluding devices right now in IDE trial. Um, the most recent, and I, I guess the one that's probably going to be released sooner than not, is the Ranger PTA balloon by Boston Scientific. It showed a one-year primary patency of 88.4%, and it should be getting uh, FDA approval uh, any day now. Other trials that are ongoing and enrolling, uh, or they have finished enrolling, is the Lutonix uh, below-the-knee uh, drug uh, drug-coated balloon. Uh, that is waiting FDA approval, and I, I believe that they're waiting to get more results from the mortality figures uh, out in year four and year five. Uh, the um, uh, Illuminate also, um, um, Celerex has a below the knee trial, which is ongoing uh, as we speak. Uh, it's the Celerex drug coded uh, balloon trial below the knee. And the um, Chocolate Touch trial uh, is also just finished enrolling. It is a specialty balloon, the chocolate balloon with uh, Paclitaxel coated onto that. Um, so this all uh, these these all these balloons are out there. We are still using them, but as you know, and I'm sure will be discussed in future talks on this uh, new cardiovascular horizons uh, digital educational series, we will talk about the future and current um, uh, topics uh, regarding the Paclitaxel controversy. We will not speak to that today. Thank you very much.